I'll trust you. <laughs> okay, this is the uh, policy committee meeting for October 24th. Welcome to the meeting. Uh, first order of business is verify, verify we've been properly posted. Yes, Lynn, we have. Properly posted, thank you. Opportunity for citizens to address the committee. Seeing none, we'll move right past that. Um, we do have five action items tonight regarding policies that, um, uh, after the minutes, we have some policies that we have to adjust. So uh, first, I would ask for approval of the minutes from our September meeting. So moved. moved by Barbara, seconded by Greg. Any changes or errors in the, in the minutes as noted? If not, all in favor of accepting the minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes, minutes are accepted, uh, five zero. Five zero. Um, we have uh, now four policies we're going to look at. In all cases, we're just dealing with some wording on them, so um, I doubt if they'll be terribly <laughs> confrontational. Yeah, uh, okay, Joe, I'm going to let turn over to you, 6171, excuse me. <clears throat> Operation of Special Education uh, Programs. Um, uh, as we went through the NEOLA uh, revisions for policy, one of the things that uh, had come up was the idea that you want to be as clear as you can to the community with who they should refer uh, a concern to. And um, the, uh, the um, title in the uh, operations of special ed programs referred to an executive director of student services and special education. Since that was drafted, um, we've got Sharon Thede, who's our director of pupil services, and we've got Jason, uh, Karen, and Patty, who are directors of special ed. We've changed the, the, op the, the, the flow there. Um, and so just to make it clear to anybody who does have a question about special ed that those questions can come to me, so my title is there, and then that can be communicated out. Um, this policy is gonna be part of the policies that will hopefully be replaced in January or February but this word change is to address our immediate operational needs um, for the rest of this year. And if you do remember, when we get into the NEOLA policies, um, the broad definition of superintendent in NEOLA will automatically indicate that there's a designee that will be taking care of it. But just to, just to stick with our current wording and be clear to our community, we wanted to change that from executive director of student services and special ed to the deputy superintendent. Uh, Barbara? Yes, um, Joe, on, on the first What's an inter... Uh, yes, uh, or in, uh, between uh, school districts. Um, it could be between school districts. It could be, be uh, between some of our community partners, the county and such, so... Okay, that's right. Okay. Yes, Joe? Would that be an intra-agency, not an inter? No, there's a... would be within a district if you had that. Oh, okay. I'm thinking just the opposite. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. Or, <laughs> yeah, we don't... It couldn't be a... Int yeah. Int intra could be two agencies within the county. So just as a reminder there, we have the first policy, the red line is the change, and then the uh, second copy is the clean the copy. Clean copy. Okay, this is an action item, and this would be coming forward to, you know, for board approval ultimately. So is there a motion for uh, approval of this change? Uh, I will move to approve. Um... Thank you, Barbara. Seconded by Amanda. Any further questions on this uh, item? Okay, seeing none, we will ask for a roll call. Uh, not no roll call. We'll do a, all in favor of accepting this change to 6171. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0, Lynn. Thank you. Okay, moving on to another 5113.1. Joe? Uh, yes, our open enrollment program. Again, um, we have used district administrator and superintendent as interchangeable terms in this policy. Um, with some of the increased attention on open enrollment, um, we wanted to make sure that we use the term superintendent in our policy 
again, for clarity, uh, clarity's sake, uh, especially as we approach January, uh, when the board has to approve the seat allocation for the 17-18 uh, school year. On this change. I would ask again for a motion for approval of 5113.1 as revised. Joe? Yeah, I'll move uh, to accept uh, the changes as presented to 5113.1 open enrollment uh, program. Joe, seconded by? Second. Barbara? Any further questions? Seeing none. Uh, all in favor of accepting the revisions to policy 5113.1, open enrollment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Okay. 5127, regarding graduation. Uh, this one does have a little bit more meat on it, but uh, I'll let Joe present that to you. Yeah, if, uh, if everybody would refer to page two, um, the actual titled page two would be the third page in this uh, packet. There's some red line information. Um, at the time uh, that uh, this policy was uh, last uh, reviewed and revised, um, the district was just beginning its iPad initiative. Um, and what we found at the time or over the course of the last three, four years is that we've got a number of students who are participating in online and blended ed experiences that go beyond the just to achieve. Uh, for instance, we've got students that are participating in online uh, courses through mm -hmm. um, course options, youth options, uh, students who are participating in a blended uh, traditional classroom experience where uh, Blackboard 9 is being utilized. And we've got a number of students who are using Play-Doh curriculum uh, as credit attainment. And so what we were looking to do here after meeting with the Teaching and Learning Committee and the principals is just expand our definition of what is that online virtual experience for our students to more capture what, what our high school kids are doing right now. Um, so that's the reason why we've added the language uh, in an online virtual or blended educational format such as eAchieve, Blackboard 9, Play-Doh, or, or other experience approved by the principal and or the Teaching and Learning Department. Okay, this is an interesting question if you have any further questions about this. Um, Joe. Yeah, I, I, I don't recall when we made this change roughly four or five years ago. I think our intent as a board was to introduce and have a requirement for uh, graduation of having some sort of online experience because it has become such um, a, a part of education. And really the intent was just to make sure that somehow our students were exposed and at that time we were most comfortable with the eAchieve model. And that's not to say that there are many uh, acceptable online uh, types of experiences and I think these are these are a couple that that are really good um, the blackboard nine has been added in, in Plato um, and we've been using both of those for a long long time um, the only thing that I I think we should maybe talk a little bit uh, and a little bit about at least from my perspective is um, and who should be uh, approving this we have an and or I guess if it's going to be or, I'd rather have it just say or. Okay. It's either going to be uh, you know approved by the principal and the teaching and learning department, or, or the teaching and learning department, or both, okay. as opposed to having and or. To me, that's a little bit, a little bit vague. Um, I'm I'm thinking that it should be an and. Okay. That's just where I'm leaning towards, um, because I think that. I, that at the teaching and lear learning department, there's going to be greater exposure to the variety of online options that are out there. And if there needs to be some research done, I'd prefer having the department doing it as opposed to taking up the principal's time to make sure that, hey, this is something that has enough meat and, and really looks like a, 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 a something that we would approve in that manner. Good. I, I think it's a good comment. And Joe, I know you talked to Jody. Would, would she have any reluctance on that? I don't believe so. No. I, 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 the the uh, the Andor was was listed in there um, for purposes where uh, we had a student who was 
uh, designated as at risk of not graduating, um, truly fitting the state definition and where they're entitled to a little bit more of a unique program um, than what would be a traditional student. Uh, so for those kids that would have an at risk plan, that's why we did the and or, but I do believe and support the idea that the teaching and learning department can continue. They know what's out there and what's needed. Yeah. And, and Joe's right about the fact that we really entered into this at a time when we were just trying to get be sure the kids are being exposed to the the concept of online learning as opposed to as I think previously recited it uh, must pass an online course well it's really the experience that we're after here and this this provides a variety of experiences and, right. and some that we haven't even uncovered yet I know you can take courses directly from some of the colleges even as a high school student so um, this is I think a very positive um, for our kids Barbara? Thank you. Um, Joe, would, this wouldn't include um, special ed students that have an IEP that they would have to take a course like this, is there? Yes, it would. We wouldn't want to discriminate against those a so general population of students. Uh, so it, it really, for in a situation uh, where a student was in special ed, the appropriateness of the class would be discussed and the appropriateness of the experience, but it wouldn't be just a, an all-out opt-out for kids. Okay. Um, it would be treated individually. Okay, but there there may be some students that wouldn't. There could be. There yes, could there be. Could yeah, be. that's what I thought. Thank you. If if we are requiring the teaching and learning department to approve this, is there any need for the principal to approve it also? Mm, I think so. Well, as uh, as you had suggested, you know, the principal and the teaching and learning department, we could have that listed there. Uh, so that it's got that double level of approval. I think the point would be we would go through the principal to get to the uh, T&L department. <clears throat> Excuse me, because the principal would understand what the, that student has been involved sure. in. That's sure. what I feel about that one. Okay, gotcha. I mean, it would keep Great. everyone informed too. Yes. I mean, just everyone on the yeah, same page. Yeah, good. So. Good. Glad we had some discussion on that because it is a little bit more than just changing a few words. It's 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 actually re reviewing what the concept was and the, and what we're really trying to accomplish by this policy. So uh, this policy is also an action item. So I would be seeking a motion for approval of policy fifty one twenty seven. I'll move to approve the Greg, revisions of uh, policy fifty one twenty seven regarding graduation requirements. Thank you, Greg. Seconded by Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. Any further questions? Joel? Just ask for clarification so we get the wording right. Um, uh, so if you start at the red line, in an online virtual or blended educational format, such as eAchieve, Blackboard 9, Play-Doh, or other experience approved by the principal and the teaching and learning department? Is mm -hmm. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. That's the way it was changed. Okay, uh, all in favor of accepting that, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero, Lynn. Okay. I lost my place. Here it is. Uh, we have a revision to policy 5141.2, the guideline. Uh, Joe? Uh, yes, um, if you were to look at the policies, and I'll just direct you to page five uh, in the red line, it would be the sixth page, uh, I believe, of the packet. Um, we, uh, we have the medication, administering medication to students uh, guidelines, uh, as well as the field trip guidelines. And uh, item number C uh, is what we're proposing to add. Uh, for all field trips, the coordinating teacher, advisor, or administrator will notify the health room clerical stra staff of the trip no fewer than seven days prior to the trip to ensure the proper preparation of plans, medication, and trained staff for the field trip. For some of our students who have uh, uh, bee allergies, um, certain food allergies, uh, uh, need diabetic cares, um, our health room clerical staff needs Thanks. time and notification in order to support that. And so through the guidelines, uh, we're asking for this addition to both the uh, medication policy as well as the field trip policy, so there's clarity across our system. We're going to see that in another policy as well? It is, uh, yes. If you see the next set oh. of guidelines, um, the same statement is listed in guidelines for... Uh, oh, yeah, 6145. Yep, so we have 5141G, 
And then 6145.7G. Uh, yes, I see. Uh, we've I, added the same statement to both uh, for reference purposes for our staff. And The question on, on the layout, the way I'm looking at this, the, the one is the red B for field trips and other co-curricular extra, was that previously separated paragraph or was that just embedded in the one above that? It almost looks like. We, we added C. Uh, it used to have uh, A, B, um, C. A, B, C, D. Uh, there were only four points there. We added the fifth point by okay. making the statement, and that changed the, number, uh, the, the lettering there. Okay, that, that uh, rearranged the lettering. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, Barbara? Yes, on um, page six, uh, line 15, letter D, school personnel designated to administer medication to students whether at school or during co-curricular or extracurricular activities will do the following that's you know very clearly stated however school personnel you know when we used to go on field trips we take parents along and sometimes a, a parent would take <coughs> five kids because we wanted to keep it small group any, They're not school personnel. For any kid who has a 504 plan, which is where some of these more heavily involved medication needs are, we're required to send a staff member along to administer the meds. So we will find uh, somebody who is trained in diabetic cares, the, uh, the uh, administration of epinephrine, the, um, whatever the medication is, and we'll have somebody trained along on the field trip. Um, with the reauthorization of the ADA in 2009, the district was required to have that response. Sure. So it could be an aide, because that's school personnel. You have to have the school personnel, either an aide, health room, clerical staff, trained teacher, somebody along who is okay. trained to administer the medication. OK, so you don't think that there would, could be any misunderstanding um, about a parent that takes a group of kids. A teacher needs to make sure that that student is assigned to a group with a school. Or during the check-in time. Yeah. Appropriate check in mm -hmm. time, yes. Okay. The, the school staff is expected to administer. Thank you. Joe. Sure. What, what's driving this, Joe? The addition of this? Yeah. Uh, the have we had make, issues or? Um, we have uh, some situations that arise when um, the health room is notified a day before a field trip uh -huh. and they're expected to coordinate the. Um, the health plans and the medication for 100 students, 150 mm -hmm. students. Um, we also have some, uh, some longer, some bigger type field trips. It's not just maybe a trip to Retzer Nature Center, uh, but it's a field trip to uh, Great zoo. America, the zoo, something where you're... So what we wanted to do was make sure that we're very clear. Um, we've provided this guidance uh, in an email structure to staff. Um, it, we still run in from time to time, uh, a kind of an oops, and we wanted to provide some administrative guideline to support the principal, the teacher, and the health room clerical, and our nurses, um, who, you know, sometime at the last minute have to get things together. So what would happen if it's not, uh, yeah, admitted within the seven, or prior to the seven-day period? Things can be up to principal discretion, um, but these things really need to be communicated well ahead. Um, we, we're not in a position where we would want to disclude any child from a field trip, right. uh, nor would we want to prevent a whole class from going. Um, so, so if this passes, um, we'd want to probably get communication out to parents and to students. Parents and this. students and staff uh, immediately that it has been a revision. Point to G, uh, as well as the um, the uh, field trip policy. And I'm wondering if you know any student who does have allergies or whatever. We have them on record. We know that at that school, and the teacher and, should know. And I wonder, yeah, if there should be some sort of oh, extra letter to those students or when they first enroll in the health room, I don't know what you call it in the beginning of the year, we know that there's issues, so they're going to be attended to by one of our people, or multiple of our people poten potentially, in a healthcare perspective. Um, 
so maybe at that time we're saying, hey, by the way, our, here's our, a reminder on this or... Our health room clerical staff has provided time at the beginning of the year and then the ongoing responsibility that if they were to get a health plan or they'd get health information uh, from a parent, you know, through their doctor, um, the, uh, they coordinate with our school nurses and notification and plans are coordinated with teachers, mm -hmm. uh, aides that work, the principals mm -hmm. of the school. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of communication in and around that. Okay. Sometimes what happens is, you know, field trip is scheduled in... Uh, November for a March outing to whatever it would be, um, parent permission slips are obtained and everything like that, and then the email <clears throat> goes out to the school 24 hours before the trip. We're trying to put steps in place to make sure that people are notified of that ahead, and that's why okay. this revision is here. Okay. And right. if, I, if I may add, please, if I may add, Joel, you know, parents certainly know seven days before a field trip that it's going to occur. I mean, it's usually... Hopefully. Two or three weeks before, so sure. that, you know they can sure. get their money in and et cetera. So gotcha. Greg, <clears throat> um, does seven days, Joe, mean seven calendar days or business days, or what does that mean? Didn't give consideration to calendar or business. Seven days. So it's calendar. Could clarify it if, if. Well, that's a good point. I, I wonder if we should say you mean Saturday and Sunday included. So that's calendar days. Why don't we just say that? Because somebody's going to come along and say, "Well, I thought you meant yeah." Right. We can add that in then, right? No fewer than seven calendar days. Thank mm -hmm. you. What line is that, Greg? Um, the red stuff. Twenty-four. On page five. Oh, yeah, thank you. That would be. 21. 21 on the field trip policy. All right, Amanda, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a question going back. Um, where Barb had started on page six, the line 15, um, where it says school personnel designated to admit of the medication. What if the parent um, of the child is chaperoning? Mm. So is that saying that the parent cannot administer that medication? It's saying that we as a district have to have somebody on the field trip trained. If, if the parent is along, our health room person isn't gonna say, no, you can't do it. It's making sure that we have that person along to provide equal opportunity to all kids. Because that parent cannot administer the same type of medication to another student. Right. They can only do it for their child. For their own child. So our staff doesn't get in the way of a parent doing it. Okay. However, we do need to, we are obligated to make sure that we have somebody who can. So but then that line would be void if the parent of that particular student who needs the medication? We're still required to do, uh, document mm -hmm. what's been given and when on the field trip. Um, and we're still required to make sure that things are in place so that we know we've done the proper, uh, proper preparation of plans, trained staff, and having the medication in place for the kids on the trip. I'm, I'm just curious because this situation actually just came up with, with us. I did two field trips. The nurse of our school called me and says, we have your children's medication. I said, I'm going to be on the trip. They're like, great, we'll send it with the teacher, you know, if need be. But the way I read that, it, it just, it's told me that even though I was there with my children, you know, if they, if the need came up, then I would have to go running to the teacher to get that medication before it could be administered. You could hold the medication. Um, However, on a field trip, you could also refuse to take it. So that is the responsibility of the district to make sure that you have the medication. So we can't rely on the parent uh, in these situations all the time. Thanks. It doesn't really say who has to administer it here. And, and it's, it's interesting, kind of a way to read this thing, but it just says school personnel personnel designated to administer, and it goes on to say they must record the dose and document the medication. It doesn't say who gives it, but um, <laughs> so it could be it either. Of, it talks about on line 24. Oh, 24, the previous? Uh, the parent or guardian. On the, on the same page? Uh, page mm -hmm. 6. 
actually paid, yeah. Um, okay, yes. 25. So they have to document that. It's given by yes. parent guardian or district personnel. A parent or a guardian, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, anything else on, on this policy? Okay, this is an action item, so I would be asking for a motion. Document any. Um, I move to accept um, policy number 5141-2G as presented. And? 60. And, yes. And 6145-7G. Okay, thank you. Barbara? Clar uh, <laughs> clarification as presented or amended? Because we did we amend it. As amended. We changed it. Thank yes, you. That's correct. Thank as you. Amended. I'll second that. Okay. Any further questions? In favor of accepting these two guidelines, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Five zero in. That takes care of our action items. We have information items none here, but we're going to have a work session shortly. And uh, other business, is there anybody that has a recommendation of something to be conducted at a future committee meeting? I have a question. Please. Mr. Cook, now that we went through this um, situation with Neola, mm -hmm. came up with these many books, what are we going to do with policy? Are we going to re go over that all again? Or as situations arise, make modifications accordingly? Uh, which, I guess, uh, to, the, to the what we're presenting with Neola? Or well, well, you know, we, we went ahead and went through the, all of the policies and, you know, dropped off what, what is not timely and added on what should be there. So then, right, right as of today, it's current. It isn't. So what, what oh. we're going to go through in the work session uh, is the process, again, that we used. Uh, okay. For access, you know, so the full board can be here. You will be getting a copy tonight of the four volumes of the policy book. Uh, so the zeros through the 9,000s okay. uh, will be provided to you tonight. Um, you'll be able to see in there that we got the books back. Uh, the uh, assistant superintendents went through those books, uh, have reviewed them. You'll see some notations in there. And then we'll discuss what is our timeline then uh, for approval. When do we want to get these books in front of you? The reason why I brought these policies uh, tonight is because these things, these policies are still what we're operating on. When the full board then does the approval of the, mm -hmm. of the uh, policies, yes. then we'll enter into that new wave of policies that'll guide us in how we operate as a system. So that, you know, January, February, somewhere in there, um, you know, we would then have a new policy book at that time. And what, how will we deal with those policy books? Are we still going to go through them and look for adaptations since we've just done this? No. Uh, once that's done, yes, um, we will be getting uh, semi-annual updates from Neola, and then updates as appropriate. Okay. The state legislature takes an action that dictates how we do something in, in schools, and we have to make a policy change. Neola will be providing us with the timeliness of that <laughs> guidance. And then our committee work will be looking at those policies and the administrative guidelines associated with them okay. um, or the policies and then making our recommendations to the board. So we'll, we're going to stay, uh, you know, it's, it's a two reading system. The yep. committee does the work vetting the policies and prevents, presents its best draft to the full board. All of our processes will stay the same. Mm -hmm. And we will, the minute that those policies are approved, I'm anticipating we're going to have some updates that we're going to need to address. Here we are. Sure go we forward are. from there. That's so. what I was wondering. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, this is this is a standing committee, the policy committee, and um, I'm assuming that the workload's going to roughly stay the same, um, and we would require monthly meetings. But you know, we may find that there's some efficiencies gained, and you know, maybe we can meet every other no month or something like that. But you know, I think as far as we're concerned, it's going to be a standing committee, and it's going to continue monthly, and until we see a need to change it in any other capacity, I think we're going to operate just as we have. 
I could see the only thing that would change, and I think we've done this in the past, is if there was an emergency situation where a policy had to be drafted and brought to the full board right away, but it would be one of those very, very unique situations. Yes. Um, and we've yes. done that in the past where we've, we've had to go to one reading, for instance, for a policy or something just changed and we have to get this up. That would be the only unique circumstance. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any other suggestions for future meetings? If not, we've completed our, our, our first chapter of our work for tonight. <laughs> um, we will. Do we have a specific time for fine, for the budget? It is six forty-five. Okay. Yeah. Then we have to stick with that. Okay. We're adjourned until.